Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Our today's topic is going to be about importing and exporting in Jira. The very first thing that I want to show you is going to be the export and the import in Jira. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the dot on my keyboard. I'm gonna type in export. All right. So you have a lot of things going on in here. So first of all, you have um, to import the Jira cloud. You have to import the uh, Jira server to restore the system, external system import. And this is where you can import from your JSON, from your Trello. Let's, let me show you that one first from CSV from Trello and from JSON but as you can see this is uh, going to be replaced on the June 30th but then again I'm going to go with the export once more and the very first thing in order to import you need to export and in order to export First of all, what you need to create is going to be a backup for cloud. Now, it says in here to create a backup of your current Jira data. You can keep this backup locally imported into a different Jira cloud site or Jira server instance. When you create a backup, Jira overwrites any previous backup file on this page. We automatically delete backup files after 14 days. If you want, you can click learn more if you want to read more about this. Right, so for the backup for the server, uh, in here it says cloud backups are intended for importing Jira cloud products only. Right, so if you want to import a cloud backup into Jira server or a Jira data center, things will break. Instead, create a backup for server below. So you have the backup for the server, but what it says, it contains next gen projects. Right, so next gen projects are actually now named the team. Uh, manage projects so this this um, wording should be changed here Jira server products in Jira data center don't support these all right you need to understand that your data center if you have it won't support this so this is how you actually create a backup it even says or delete all next-gen projects and their issues outright since we're actually focused on the cloud I'm gonna go for here and it says include attachments avatars and logos in the backup I'm gonna leave this checked I'm gonna say create a backup for cloud now what is he's doing he is exporting the data he's exporting the plugin data and everything what are you actually gonna get is going to be a zip file now within that zip file there are like a lot of things that are actually being containing there uh, some of the XML files and also there are since I uh, included the attachments and avatars and everything so when I want to download this I click on the save and basically in here it says well this is the Jira export that I have in here your export uh, is probably and I guarantee it's gonna be much much bigger than this one right here because I have a like uh, a lot of projects in here that are mostly like or empty or don't have a lot of attachments so this is why the export didn't actually took that much but for you it may took a lot because you might have uh, a lot of issues like say thousands of them a lot of projects in there 
a lot of attachments, a lot of uh, logos, a lot of those things and more you have, well, the bigger the data for the download is going to be. All right, so now, since we actually have all of these things in here, so this is the backup. Now, what we're actually going to need is going to be to import the cloud, right? So, first of all, it says one or more Jira products are on Jira Cloud Free Plan. For those products, you can only import up to 10 active users and free agents for the Jira service management. If you import more than 10 users, your free plan will be upgraded tri to the trial version of standard plan. So you should watch out if you're using the uh, free version of Jira. Right, so first of all, there are some things that are being recommended in here. So where it says that you need to make sure like the total size of the XML file should be less than or equal to 10 gigabytes before zipping and importing the file, right? So this is going to um, this is going to differ because when you open your zip file, there are gonna be more things in here. So for entities, for example, you, there are gonna be some stuff like a database statistics, like how many issues, how many projects, how many custom fields, workflows, users when the upgrade was actually there, when the upgrade uh, was in there, what this actually means, especially if you have a, a Jira server and the Jira data center to see when, you, uh, when your, um, when your uh, versions were actually upgraded. Well, now you cannot actually upgrade on the uh, server because uh, the because the support has ended, right? So what I'm going to do, so there, choose what you want to do with your imported data. So you can merge with the existing cloud users. And this may escalate the permissions of users when they're imported. Be sure to check what groups they'll be merged into the cloud site. So I would actually recommend to stick with this and uh, because you don't want to overwrite existing cloud users because this would cause havoc and this was actually cause a mess and you don't want to have mess. So you just click on import data and in my case, I'm going to go with the zip file. Now, you should be following their practice of uh, splitting your backup file into two separate files. So this is uh, for the cloud only. So this importing a database backup file containing active objects dot XML and entities will erase all existing data replaced with the data read your backup. So you need to watch out for this. You should read this article. Uh, right, and in here, apply settings and check for errors. So for the outgoing email, you want to have, of course, the outgoing email. And this is how the import will look like. So it will uh, look for the database, it will process the Jira data, it will pro process the plugin data, uh, it will update the database, import attachments, and etc. So this uh, this will um, this will vary, like I said, depending on how much of issues you have, how much uh, how much of attachments you have, especially what is the size of those attachments. Um, so your uh, your logos that you put on your projects as well so that is going to be included as well of course if you tick that checkbox in there if you don't so it's not gonna import all of that data 
So since it's doing that, uh, there is actually another thing that I wanted to talk about that that is importing your issues with the CSV file in your Jira. Yes, you can import uh, the issues. So you can do that. And uh, you can do that, in, uh, let's say, if, it, if we can say it like in a bulk motion. Yeah, where you actually need to have the CSV file requirements, right? So each CSV must possess a heading row with a summary column, right? The header row must contain a column for summary data. The header row should avoid containing any punctuation or the importer may not work correctly. So, like they saying, this is summary, assignee, reporter, issue type, description, priority. And then you have summary test issue reporter. This is the uh, reporter. It's um, its name, uh, but this is not valid. So, as you can see, and um, there shouldn't be any punctuation, right? Commas cannot be omitted, right? Capturing the data that spans multiple lines. Use double quotes in your CSV file to capture the data that spans multiple lines. For example, Jira, Jira will treat the following as valid CSV file with a single record. So, you see, this is how it works. Summary, description, and status. And you have like login fails. This is on a new line open. So, this is for the summary. This is for the description, and this one is going to be for the status. So, if you want to import your issues using the uh, CSV file, you should read this article as well. All right, so it's, it's like taking three minutes to import the uh, the file, the zip file, that is 500 kilobytes. Imagine your file being like one gigabytes or two gigabytes or five. Really depends. So this would last. This would last much, much longer, right? But one once it's finished, you're good to go. So yeah. All right, so we're going to wait just a little bit, and that should be it. All right, let me just let me just pause it, and we'll get back to you guys when when this is finished. Right, welcome back guys. The uh, import has been finished and says your data file was successfully imported to Jira Cloud. Search and text fields using JQL might not work until background re-indexing is completed. To re-index, it may actually take up to four, 48 hours depending on the amount of data you have migrated. So this is it. And this is if you restore from Jira Cloud, you perform these steps. If you restored from the Jira server, you perform those steps as well. Uh, grant application access basically it only leads you to your uh, product page, but basically, all right. So let's go. with this one all right in here I want this one all right so this is for Jira Pro Discovery no we don't want that manage Jira apps manage the product well basically that is everything that we are actually having And from here, you just move on. All right. User access admin, you just add the groups. Basically, that is it. All right. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.